skateboarding and watching the leaves flutter and fall. It's like... I am going to wear it when I'm on a road with hills, even if I look like a total dork. You know why? Because a year ago, I fell and cracked my skull. And everybody said, you better wear a helmet. Because I said, there's no way I'm not getting back on the board. And, uh... If I have an accident again, and I'm not wearing my helmet, <laughs> even if I don't crack my skull, I just break my arm, I'll be in the ER, and uh, people will be pissed off that I didn't wear a helmet. Because I'm not going to lie to them. Because right before I had my accident, made a choice and that was to <sighs> be a different person and be honest and it was a really decisive moment to tell someone the truth because I, I lied about something stupid and I just realized as inconsequential as that lie was in like in terms of lies I'd borrowed his vape and then lost it and told him I hadn't used it barter without asking and I was like I gotta tell him you know hey because he knew that it was a lie and anyway so I said tomorrow morning I'm gonna go call my brother and tell him and I wanted to call him right when I got up but it was early and so I said I'm just gonna go skateboarding and uh skate down to the gas station and get an energy drink. And, uh, you know, and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to call him. And uh, on my way there, I hydroplaned and cracked my skull and went to the hospital, got out, and ended up going back. Um, the only time that I really contemplated the possibility really of my own death at least in recent years um maybe the second time anyway so I I don't think that skateboard like depending on the street it's not dangerous if you know how to do it and so when I'm going down the walking mall and I'm going literally two miles an hour it's Kind of silly, but I um I've been meaning to just make a video telling the whole story, but and and I didn't expect to tell the story just now. I was just gonna go longboarding and sort of talk about the stuff I'm thinking about, but, um, I, longboarding has been one of my most passionate hobbies 
at least last year when I lived in town, but <laughs> this year I, uh, I'm not living in town, so I have to drive there to, to skateboard, and so I haven't done it, but when I was living in town, I was longboard for like hours a day. I would go for a run, I'd get back home, be like, well, time for another run. And uh, so I'm getting back into it. The thing that I love about longboarding is that it's the only time I've done like a physical activity that has a spiritual feeling to it, a very zen-like feeling. You get into a flow state, you're just carving back and forth, back and forth. And it just is so peaceful and it's just really good for my mental health. So I highly recommend it. And so, I, uh, it, it's been like months since I've done it, so I'm not 100% a little concerned, you know, about lobbing, but it's not bad. Come back. Um, so the day is October 13th. October 13th, 2022. And I have made the decision. as of last week to give up the dream of, of the Treadwell House. Um, I will always have really great memories of my time there. Um, moving in, last maybe July, August, maybe August. And gave me a taste of independence. It, let me feel a sense of community living in town. I never knew how different it feels going to the gas station in town. When you live in walking distance, because when you live in town, the area surrounding, you know, your house, even if only your front yard is yours, it's still connected to the world around you. So psychologically, you have a sense of your home extending into the surrounding area, right? Like you belong there. So when you're walking through town, you are in your home. And the people you meet are part of your, you know, more part of your extended family, which is more of how human beings are meant to live and what we're wired for. But when you're living out of town and you have to drive five miles and it's, you know, it's, even if it's just ten minutes, when you get into town, you're, you're in, in a place that is foreign territory. And so, I, uh, heard people talk about, you know, you know, plenty of people are aware that living in town is better because it's a sense of community, but I like the fact that I kind of had this idea about psychologically 
why living in town is better. So when you say, oh, it's great to have a sense of community, you're just thinking about it, it would be great to be around people. That is true. That's very good. But I, I think that you could, you could live in town and not really have any friends and not even interact with people very much. But the land, the territory around you, we are wired to sort of perceive territory psychologically. And so I think that that gives another reason, that gives another logic that's tangible for why living close to other people in a, in a town or village or community is extremely good for mental health. And I think that that is something that I am going to take into account in the future if I'm trying to decide whether I want to live in the countryside or town. I might choose the country, but um, I'm going to keep that in the back of my head since this is a time when I am preparing to move ahead with my life. I'm going to move out to Colorado, and I'm trusting God to provide, and I am um... it's funny, in the past, this year, all year long, all I've wanted is just rest, just exhaustion from trying to fight you know life is a spiritual battle and you know I learned how to be a spiritual warrior but I, I stopped being able to handle that and so it's kind of surprising that now I'm feeling more like a drive to actually go out and experience the world which even though I haven't really found like quite the rest that I'm looking for is pure peace. That's something that has been happening recently. Um, but I think that I have gotten enough rest that um, I think that reinvigorating myself and re-stimulating myself uh, would be a very good thing for me. So that's kind of my goal right now. And I think that if I have that energy back, that will um, once again spur me on to take actions that will bring me to a place of happiness because I have accomplished my dreams. I'm living in a place that feels like home. I feel safe. I'm healed. And I don't think that I am going to find that living in Berryville in the shadow of my father. I do not need any connection or any reminder. And, and unfortunately, the past few years, I've had to out of necessity because I, I needed the help just to survive and I couldn't do it on my own. Um, but I've become very... I've just, I've grown so much, but at the same time, deadness and stagnancy in other parts of my heart have really kept me from living life. So, I'm going to end it there. Um, final note, I have been loving the clouds this year, and I'm really surprised that this time of year has brought really distinct clouds that um, I'm sure that I've seen them in past years but I've never really noticed them and they're very fractally and I don't know what type of clouds you would call them but just really beautiful and I think that just moving forward I think that I'm going to keep really appreciating clouds and I'm just going to hold on to that and I'm just going to 
I'm ever anxious, I'm just going to go outside and just look at clouds, even if they're boring, and just stare at them and see what I can see. Just look for rabbits and dragons and stuff. Paradolia for fun. Um, and I think, you know what, it's, it's interesting. Um, I have heard somebody say a really great way to deal with anxiety attacks, if, if somebody else is having one, is to ask them to look around the room and give me a list of 10 things that you see. I've never done this, but I think that that simple act distracts you enough that the panic actually subsides, which is really interesting. I'm going to have to try it. But I think that looking at clouds and saying, okay, just go look at clouds is, is would be a really great version of that. Count how many clouds you see, you know, that sort of thing. And I love that because it drive it would drive me to heal anxiety or depression with nature so yeah just had that thought just now and um i have so many epiphanies these days that are just profound and life-changing and then i don't know if that one would be but that really could be one little ingredient that I might, there might be 10 things in my life that I really need to practice or do or just make a part of my life to really, like, push me over the hump and get me well and functioning again and happy. And one of those might be um, exercise. One of those, you know, and just making a point to go outside and see, try to look at every cloud you can and see what they are. Maybe I could study um, types of clouds. I used to know a fair amount them, about them and uh, flying gliders really um, made me understand them because you can feel the wind currents up there so you look at the clouds and you, you can actually have a sense of what's going on. Um, so anyway, I'm seeing a gorgeous scene, and so I gotta stop and, uh, and take a picture of it. Um, wow. So... There you have it.